What's the best first-person shooter about genetically modified space marines? Halo! Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the funniest moment from every season of Modern Family. We, lo we lost our baby in the car and people are judging us! I swear to God, I'm gonna break it! You were on fire, lady. Really? You're still going. Oh my God. What? You see her? No. But I see myself in the role I was born to play. For this list, we'll be looking at those hysterical modern family moments that hit our funny bone like a model plane to the face. We know Phil's osophy on things, but give us your osophy on the funniest moments in the comments below. Season 1 Dylan Sings in the Moonlight. Cam introducing Lily to the family a la The Lion King is still one of the series' funniest and most memorable moments, and it happened all the way back in the first episode. But it was another musical moment three episodes later that tops our list as the funniest moment of that first season. This is uh, actually a song I wrote for Haley. It's called In the Moonlight. Lovely title, Dylan. When Dylan sings the family a song he wrote for Haley, it all seems very sweet at first. But unlike other TV and movie love songs that rely on sentimentality or humor, this one really leans into its raw sexuality. I just wanna do you, do you, do you wanna do me, do me, underneath the moonlight, the moonlight. Probably not the best idea when playing a song for your girlfriend's family. Although no one can deny that the song is catchy. And it finally feels it has found its place. Cause baby, baby, I just wanna do you, do you. Baby, you could do me, do me. Season two, Claire and Phil caught in the act. This season two episode features two terrifying things. The first is walking in on your parents doing the dance with no pants, or from the other perspective, having your kids walk in on you. We were, as they say, oh. having sex. That's not a euphemism, Phil. That's exactly what we were doing, having sex in front of our children. The second is having a discussion together about what you just saw. Basically, mm -hmm. it's two adults. Adults. It's like you're shaking hands, mm -hmm. but you're not using your hands at all. Both moments are wonderfully awkward and perfectly funny, but only because they're happening to someone else. We definitely couldn't forget about Jay slapping the chicken, but it's Phil and Claire getting caught in the act that takes our entry. Happy anniversary. It always is. Hey, Mom, can I get... Oh, my God, enough! Season 3, Lily Swears. Cam's sidewalk Stanley Kowalski was a definite contender here. Stella! Stella! But it was another moment that took the top spot in season three. Cameron apparently has two weaknesses, old people rapping and children cursing. In this episode, it's the latter that leads to the funniest moment of the season. When Lily learns her first curse word, Cam isn't able to keep himself from laughing. Daddy, can I have some ice cream? No, honey, if you're hungry, you can have some fruit. Fruit? Oh, God. I have two children. And as parents know, if you laugh at something your kid does, they will keep doing it. Fortunately, in this case, Lily uses her newfound ability for good and not evil. When she sees Cam crying at a wedding, she drops a few F-bombs to make him laugh. And it turns out Cam isn't the only one who thinks children's swearing is funny. Daddy, <laughs> daddy. <laughs> I told you it was funny. Season four, The Godfather. There aren't many film directors who can say they've had one of their movies parodied brilliantly on Seinfeld and Modern Family, but Francis Ford Coppola can. May God be with you all. Seinfeld did it with Apocalypse Now when Elaine had to go to Burma to get Peterman's signature in order to save her job. Years later, Modern Family did it with The Godfather. Don't worry, I'll take care of everything tomorrow. That may not be necessary, my wife. Sure, the scene is funny even if you haven't seen the movie, but if you have, it reaches funniest moment of the season level. And that's saying a lot, given that season four also featured Cam and Mitch taking Lily to a Vietnamese restaurant. I think we would all be better off if people would go back to where they came from. I... I'll pull the car around. Yes. 
Season 5, Lily Visits the Dry Cleaners Who can remember the last sitcom wedding that went smoothly without any issues or mishaps? Well, it certainly wasn't Mitch and Cam's wedding, which might hold the record for the most issues of any sitcom wedding ever. Just get another caterer here, or these people will be eating butterfly bisque. Okay, I'm trying to remain calm, but you realize that's another sign of the apocalypse, right? Famine? He sounds as bad as Steven Stefan and Longinus. Oh, so what you're saying is we have four horsemen? While firemen are putting out actual fires, Mitch and Cam have some metaphorical ones to deal with, like a mix-up with their suits. I can't handle this. We're getting married in five hours. I don't have my perfectly tailored tux. I can't just go buy something off the rack. I'm not Cindy Crawford. The guys try to make it right by having Lily climb into the locked dry cleaners and find their tuxes. But she just ends up going for a ride on the conveyor. At least they didn't lock her in the car. A, B, C, what are you singing to her? People get arrested for this, Mitchell. Season six, where's Waldo? We can all admit that finding Waldo isn't easy. It's cruel and inappropriate. It just sets children up to fail. If it was then, to quote Leonard Hofstadter, it would be called There's Waldo. Yet still, the trouble Cam has finding that red and white striped dude goes beyond just difficult. No matter how long he stares at it, Cam cannot find Waldo. It's crazy. Oh, what once? He pointed to a barber pole and we just gave it to him. But it also goes beyond just funny when he dresses Lily up as Waldo for Halloween at school and then loses her in the playground. Oh no, where's Waldo? He has to FaceTime Mitch in order to find their daughter. Of course, speaking of FaceTime, we can't talk about season six without mentioning Connection Lost, the brilliantly original episode played out entirely via email, text, and video chatting. Season seven, virtual reality Phil. When Phil gets a listing for a sleek and sexy house, the rest of the family has the bright idea to take advantage of the empty house for their own fun times. This tub? has 16 pulsating jets and the whole floor vibrates with something called Swedish release. Unfortunately, they all pick the same day to sneak over there and that's when the hilarity ensues. What are you doing here? Oh, um, my SAT prep group needed a quiet place to study. You ain't studying acting. There are plenty of laughs as each of them arrive, then hide to avoid the others, but the funniest moment of the whole thing is virtual reality Phil. Wearing his VR glasses and headphones, Phil is immersed in a role-playing game and is unaware of the members of his family standing frozen all around him. Powder! <sighs> Let's send him back to hell in time for mad skills to make it to his oboe lesson! Season eight, Sleeping Pills. If Mitch and Cam taught us anything over the course of 11 seasons, it's that you should never take sleeping pills on an airplane until you're completely sure that the plane has taken off. What does quidado mean? I think it means sleep tight. Wow. Oh, well, cheers. Quidado. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In season eight, the couple pop their pills a little early and are forced to make other arrangements while the pills slowly take control. You're connecting in Dallas to Turks and Caicos. You need to be at gate 32 in four minutes. Do you understand? Yes, I'm not an idiot. Okay, we have to be at gate four and 32 minutes. No. Gate 32, write it down. What follows are the funniest five minutes of the season as the guys drowsily make their way through the airport. They do make it to their destination, but with a few unexpected additions with them. So it appears I've gotten a piercing. Mm -hmm. Murray, why does your arm say Murray? <laughs> Who, whose dog is this? What do you mean whose dog? You refused to board without him. I did. Season nine, The Escape Room. Cam, Phil, and Gloria want to go to an escape room, but their Pritchett counterparts say no. Because when you get in a stressful situation, you start to scream, and I'm not taking that show into a locked room. Yeah, and this one gets panicky if he's stuck in traffic for more than five minutes. This is just you and me. Oh, hard pass, honey. In a confined space, you're just bouncing off the wall like flubber. However, when the three non-Pritchetts decide to go anyway, they get locked in a basement and have to figure out how to escape so that they can go to the escape room. Guys, if it comes to it, and I mean this, I want you guys to eat me. As I told you before, in those elevators and in the traffic jam years ago, I am not going to eat you. Okay, you say that now? We may not get out of here, and we may have to make some hard decisions. The scene is filled with one great laugh after another, from Phil trying to die hard his way out to considering the possibility of Shawshanking it. In the end, they're able to escape, but only by thinking like they're Pritchett partners, which is something they obviously must never talk about again. They can never know how much smarter they are than us. Never. Season 10, Sophie's Choice the Musical. Who knew that trying to get almost sold out tickets online could be so funny? The theater reserved a few amazing house seats for an online lottery. And there's a rumor Meryl Streep is going to be in the audience. 
We've all been in that situation, and while it isn't funny when it happens to us, watching others struggle with the process definitely is. The Big Bang Theory played it for laughs with Comic-Con tickets, and in season 10 of Modern Family, Mitch and Cam cracked us up, refreshing their screens for Sophie's Choice the Musical. Come on, refresh. I refresh am. Refresh like your life depends I on it. I am. Unlike the guys from The Big Bang, Mitch and Cam were able to purchase a couple of tickets. Mind you, it did involve some CAPTCHA help from their daughter, as well as the use of her credit card. <laughs> oh, thank you, sweetie, you saved us. It's fine, I needed the miles. Oh, thank you. Where's she off to? I'm sure it's fine. Okay. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Season 11, The Prescott. When Alex's new job puts her up at the fancy Prescott luxury apartments, the rest of the family is excited to take advantage of all the amenities. This place is everything, um, an archery range, a shark tank, a a Westworld? From the high-end screening room to the water slide and the gourmet dining, everyone wants to try something. Let's come up with a plan together. Meet me at the swim-up bar. There's a swim-up bar? I know! We should be living here and Alex should be living in our stupid house. The problem is that the complex has a strict policy forbidding unaccompanied guests, which of course doesn't stop the family from memorizing Alex's resident ID code and sneaking back in. What follows are classic modern family crossed paths, misunderstandings, and double entendres that lead to lots of great laughs and a hefty bill for Alex. $200 for sugar baby procurement. Sorry. Eight sliders and one coconut water. He charged me for that? $300 for slide rescue. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.